Alright you guys got another video on how to make Microsoft Edge better. Now quite a few people do use Microsoft Edge and I'm going to show you how you can lighten the load and make it a little bit better uh, by disabling some features and services that you don't need. As you can see when you open up Microsoft Edge you get bombarded by a bunch of ads and a bunch of links that you might not want on your browser. So I'm going to go through and show you how we can set this up and make it a little bit more responsive. So first off, go to the cog up in the top right hand corner and on the layout section, you'll see uh, informational. Uh, uh, basically what we want to do here is change this to focus and this will then remove all of that bloat from the original page. But we're still not finished yet. There's quite a few more things we can do to make Edge that little bit more responsive. So first off, quick links. You can either turn these on if you want to use some quick links on your browser or you can just completely hide them. I'm going to leave mine off, but if you want them on, you can have one row, two rows, or how many ever rows you want for your particular uh, sites that you like to visit on a frequent basis, and you don't want to search for them. You just use those. I'm going to turn those off. Edit the background image. So if you want to change your background image to a nice image, you can turn this feature on. Now I myself do like a nice image background and they do offer some really nice images on uh, Microsoft Edge. So if you do want to select some of these, you can do. I'm just going to leave this one selected, but there's a bunch of them inside here. Or you can just leave it plain if you want to. And uh, that's what I'm going to change up here. So you will see an image here now, but that's how I prefer to have my browser. So next we're going to do some more changes. Go to the cog again. And you'll see down on the bottom where it says explore stories and more down the bottom. And we can change this where it says content. And you can see it says headings only. And we can turn this content off so you don't see it. And that's going to make it a little bit more clearer. But if you want to have this on here, by all means, have it there. But if you want to turn this off, that's how you can turn that off and have a much more cleaner look. Also show weather up the top here. We can toggle this off to turn the weather off if you're not interested in the weather symbol and the weather app at the top. I personally turn that off, but if you want it on, you can actually have it on. It's entirely up to you. So again, going into the section now of the manage theme section, you can go in here and this will allow you to change your themes and manage them. Now by default, system default and obviously theme default will be the fastest. But if you do like to have dark mode or light mode, or you want to change the, your theme to a nice color background like Icy Mint or some sort of cool breeze or something like that, you can do. And you could just change it right here. So depending on what your needs are and how you like it looking to match all your taskbar and things like that, you can set this up right here. Next up, you can see here, there's a bunch of other stuff here, like try the new look and feel of Microsoft Edge. I've left this on. Uh, but this is going to give you some of the new rounded edge features for Microsoft Edge. Next, you can disable some of these buttons up the very top here if you're not using them. Here is some of the buttons. If you want to turn these off, you can toggle all of these off here if you're not using any of these features. It just allows you to disable them and uh, clean out the clutter up on the top uh, bar of your browser here. You can see I've just removed those by just toggling those little switches there off. So entirely up to you which ones you turn off and which ones you leave on. Everyone's going to have their own uh, personal preferences. I normally leave the favorites button on and just turn off everything else. Just uh, makes things a little bit more responsive. And of course you can play around inside here and turn some of these features off by just toggling these features on and off to see whether it's something that you like or dislike. And this is what it's all about. You can always reset these back to default. It's not going to cause any major problems to your browser. You can just reset back, back to factory settings and it will be perfectly fine. So you can change all your fonts here to the font size. And you can also use double click if you wish. This is where you can customize uh, your actual font sizes. If you're a bit hard of uh, seeing, you can actually make the font a bit bigger. Next, move on to the sidebar here. Now there's quite a few features inside here you can customize to your own liking. This sidebar on the right hand side, you can allow sidebar apps to show notifications. I don't want notifications, so you can toggle those off. And again, you've also got the other one 
up the top there, which is personalize my uh, top sites in the customized taskbar. So when you go inside the Copilot here, you can turn that off if you don't want Copilot uh, enabled on your browser. Just toggle this off right here, and then we can restart the actual browser itself, and this will make changes. So let's go ahead and turn off some of the stuff, like show shopping notifications. I don't want shopping notifications, and I'm going to reset the browser uh, by just clicking on restart, and this will turn those features off. Next, we can turn off some of these features, which are inside here, which I don't need. All of these are recipes, shopping, and real estate, and all this sort of stuff. You can turn all this rubbish off if you don't want it, and you can remove all this by just putting the sliders to the off uh, section. Get all the notifications. Again, I'm not interested in notifications, and uh, all of these, I'll just work my way through all of these and turn off all of the notifications on this section. Once you've done all of this, we can move on to the next section. So you can see Christmas gifts here. It takes you straight to a Christmas gift section. Now, the reason why these uh, settings exist is because Microsoft get a little kickback every time you make a purchase through this browser. So bear that in mind. So what we're going to do is click on the Edge browser again. And now we've made some changes here. You can see we've changed this all up under the cog here. That's all now been configured the way we like. And we can now go up to the three dots and go to the settings section and make some changes inside here. So inside here, you're going to see this is where the main settings are. I'm going to go back into the sidebar here and we'll turn off some of these here. Now, also down in this Copilot section and other sections here, you can manage some of these locations. You can see it says ask. You can block all of this stuff. You can come in here and go right away through this and block what you don't need. So if you don't want to use any of this stuff, you could just block it. Notifications, block, and a bunch of other stuff inside here, like intrusive ads. You can see it's blocked by default, and that's how it should be. Even though intrusive ads still come through, they uh, still allow this to happen. And I really want to block all of this stuff. I'm not interested in any of this. So I'll just go through and block everything on these sections. So just work your way through the list and click on block for anything that you're not interested in in these sections of your browser. Now it goes without saying, if you do use your browser with these features, then leave them alone. Don't touch them. And that's perfectly fine. It's just the fact that some people don't want these features and they want to block them. And you can do. So that's now all done. Now, another thing you can do is actually disable the sidebar altogether. And you can create a new DWORD 32 bit value and call it UBS sidebar uh, enabled. And you should see a zero here. And it's in that location you can see on the screen right there. Once you do that, the sidebar will be completely removed from your browser and freeing up a lot of that stuff that you might not want on there. So let's go ahead and continue with a few more tweaks. We're going to go into the privacy search and services here and we're going to make some changes inside here so there is some things you can do inside this location to make edge a little bit more snappier obviously it goes without saying like send uh, do not track requests you can see some of these features are grayed out and that's because i've set these as a policy but again required diagnostic data and also we do have uh, the other one which is a uh, personalization and advertising, I would definitely turn these off as I've done. And I've also set a policy uh, to block these so they don't ever send data back. And I can set this up. Now, I've shown you how to do this before. I think I have anyway. If I haven't, let me know in the comments section below and I'll make a video on how to do that. But also down on the services section, you can see get notifications of uh, related things you can explore with Discover. I'm going to turn these features off because I have no use for these services. But if you do, then leave them turned on. I'm just going to turn them off because obviously they're a service and I don't really uh, need them. So let me go ahead and toggle all of this stuff off. Now, you can also uh, do the address bar and search here. This is where you can change this as well. So by default, it's recommended that you use Bing and you can just change this to Google if you wish. And you can also change the, uh, the address bar or search box recommended. That's what it's recommended right there. So depending on how you want to set yours up will determine on how you what selections you put in here. There is a DuckDuckGo and a bunch of other stuff. 
Google, in my opinion, still has the best search features going. It does give you the best results on uh, Google search, in my personal opinion. Uh, Bing just doesn't find anything, and DuckDuckGo just completely is garbage. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and take a look here. This is all of the recommended address bar and search engines that is recommended in here, and you can make a default from here, and you can change whatever you like inside here. You can see DuckDuckGo there, a bit more for the paranoid people that don't want to give any data back to Google, and they're giving it to DuckDuckGo. You can't hide on the internet plain and simple. So let's go ahead and open up the browser again. And it's looking a lot more cleaner and a lot more uh, less cluttered. So let's go here uh, to the settings one more time here. I just want to remove this, uh, the actual bar here, which is for your actual favorites and stuff like that. You can actually toggle this off. Let me go ahead and toggle this off inside here. They do keep changing these uh, settings inside here for some reason. Every time they uh, bring out a new update they keep shifting stuff around and removing stuff but that's where you can hide your favorites up the top there next system and performance let's go back into the settings here and you can see continue running background extensions and apps when microsoft edge is closed you definitely want to turn that off because otherwise it's going to be using system resources now i think you agree that microsoft edge does look a lot cleaner and less cluttered the way Microsoft want you to have it with all of this bloat everywhere. So it's sort of de-bloating Microsoft Edge, really. And in my personal opinion, quite a few people have said in the comment section, why do you want to disable Edge? Because I use Edge and I like it. Well, if you do like it and you do use Edge, well, this is how you can sort of declutter uh, Microsoft Edge and make it more usable. Now, some people are going to be shouting in the comment section saying, I use these features, why am I disabling them? You don't have to disable them. You can disable which features that you want to disable and leave the rest well alone. It's entirely up to you. Now, some people will go as far as removing it completely from the computer, but this can cause a few problems. So you're probably best just to declutter it the way I've shown you there and just leave it well alone on the system. That's simple. Anyway, but that said, I think that's going to be about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall catch you in the next video or I'll catch you on the Discord server. Bye for now.